Hello and welcome back to another 5v5. Should you buy the Synology RS1221 Plus? It's their new half depth rack mount 8 bay for you guys in the SMB market, small, medium business. And just like before, although I do have a full hardware review and software overview of this device coming soon, it has been delayed really annoyingly. But nevertheless, I thought we'd push on and get the 5v5 out of the way early doors. Today, I'm going to tell you five reasons why you should consider buying the RS1221 Plus and five reasons why you might not want to. So let's get straight into it. The first reason that I recommend the RS1221 Plus for a number of you is because of that CPU and memory combo. Yes, this device knocks around at the 1000 plus mark without the VAT, but you are getting a very, very good um, mid-range CPU there for business for virtualization, surveillance, and taking advantage of all of your clients and staff data in a very a cohesive and useful way invo involving the collaboration suite as well as great internal handling of encrypted performance and general RAID performance internally backed up with that ECC memory meaning that you've got a nice little few security features back end and this is a device that brings a nice affordable amount of hardware internally and externally in this rack mount when generally rack mounts have always been heavily associated with an enormous spend this does find a price point i would argue is quite similar to that of desktop units not quite similar enough spoiler alert for later but still for what you are getting and the output it can do in an 8-bay contained system, it's really impressive. That CPU and memory that is still really wowing us in the network attached storage industry. Reason number two that you may want to consider the RS1221 uh, 1221 Plus is, as mentioned, it is half depth. These really are becoming popular things. Rack mounts, I remember back when I started in this industry, were hugely deep, like the 19-inch depth rack mounts. They were enormous. You had rack mounts where the, the cabinet, you had to get them on sliding rails because it was the only way to deal with them. And although smaller rack mounts have generally been available for about four to five years, it has to be said that the hardware inside a number of them were actually quite pants. A number of them arriving with dual core ARM processors and half a gig and one gig of memory. You couldn't power anything with that these days. And now we're getting quad-core Intel 64-bit processor, ECC memory, DDR4 rack mounts that can be upgraded in a number of ways. And this is a prime example of how this technology has become considerably smaller to handle. And with half-def rack mounts, it allows people that want to install servers in their home for business, but don't have giant rack cabinets to get away with it. It could be slotted inside a small TV unit if need be, although it will be a touch noisy, on top of that, more portable users of rack mount solutions with portable rack cabinets that get put in the boots of cars and in small TV recording uh, vehicles, half-depth rack mounts have become very, very popular, and this is very much one of the best I've seen in a very long time. The reason number three that you should consider the RS1221 Plus as your next business NAS is SH. R Synology Hybrid RAID. Yes, we've talked about it here on the channel several times. Synology's hybrid RAID system never gets enough credit in my, in my opinion. Yes, it doesn't perform as high as that as traditional RAID. It's a slight dip and Synology themselves do volunteer that insofar as a lot of their SA series, their XS series and ultimately their high-end enterprise series does not support Synology hybrid RAID because of that performance dip. But this rack mount, which has got business written all over it, does arrive with support of it. So those, for those that aren't aware, Synology Hybrid RAID is the ability to mix and match drives and still be able to take advantage of the additional capacity. If you have an 8-bay device like this and you've fully populated it with 1TBs, bit weird, uh, and you had like a RAID 5, you've got one disk of redundancy, you'd have 7 terabytes to play with. But a few years down the line when you're running out of space, which you definitely will at that capacity by the way, if you try to introduce larger drives, 4, 8, 10, 12 TB, whatever, normal RAID will not see those larger capacities. It will look at them and go, no, we're only having one TB of that. And therefore, you lose out and you have to replace the entire system of drives in order to get the extra capacity. Synology Hybrid RAID will identify the larger capacities. And once you've installed more than one of the larger drives, it will start absorbing the extra storage and give you that in your overall storage array. 
SHR, very, very appealing, and I'm glad that it's made it onto this rack mount system. Reason number four that you may consider buying the RS1221 Plus is ventilation and cooling. This is a compact chassis. It has to be said that one of the main reasons that rack mounts have such long, deep chassis is because the cooling is purely horizontal. They're normally stacked on top of each other, so they can't have vents in the surrounding areas in the way that desktop systems do. All the cooling has to be through the device, and therefore they generally have that long depth um, design so the cooling can pass over all of the internal heat sinks, transistors, um, PCB boards, the drive media, everything as productively as possible. Now, half depth rack mount chassis generally will generate a lot more heat. That's why up until recent years, we've only ever seen them with incredibly energy efficient processors, ergo less powerful ones. But this system manages to be compact, but still have tremendous cooling over the device. It's using a smaller motherboard than I've seen in a number of systems. The cooling is angular at the back on either side, drawing air intelligently through the device. The storage media has a full vent bay above it to help cooling air pass over the top. Even the PSU, which manages to be uh, internally placed with an angular connector, still has great cooling inside to pass the air over the top, even in this compact chassis something very rarely seen in terms of cooling versus space generally need a lot more space for the air to pass around and this somehow manages to make a comparatively um, vented and spaced out area inside despite being only 30 centimeters deep or 40 with the uh, dual PSU version that we'll touch on later reason number five that you may like to buy the RS1221 plus is PCIe upgradability. The device arrives with a PCIe upgrade slot, which we've seen from Synology in the past and in its predecessor, the 1219 Plus, but this is a PCIe Gen 3 times 8, up to 8,000 megabytes per second transmission between a connected card and the board. You are looking at dual port 10G cards. You are looking at fiber channel. You are looking at 25G, even 40 GBE, though you're gonna to struggle to saturate that on eight drives, maybe with the expansion. But still, nevertheless, it is great that this device has got that nice high-tier PCIe upgrade slot as more um, a better and improved PCIe cards come out of Synology, like the, dual, uh, the Combo 10G and NVMe upgrade card, like dual port 10G cards. And now, with Fiber Channel being mentioned more and more in DSM-7, I think this is going to be a system where it's going to be interesting to see if people are going to make this an affordable jump into FC, along with their accompanied um, storage systems internally but things aren't always perfect and along with those five reasons that you're going to like this device I think there are five reasons where this system might make you go no nah, you're all right so reason number one that might make you say that one GBE guys this system is one GBE again I get it Synology you like to keep things at a base level you like to make sure things are tried and tested true and you want to make sure things are as uniform as possible for DSM but for the love of everything could you please just get out of one GBE we're seeing the odd 10G system we're seeing lots of tie-end enterprise have 10G but 10G is becoming incredibly mainstream and incredibly affordable along with 2.5 GBE and 5 GBE cropping up more and more in servers and connected switches this device being 1 GBE, even over 4 LAN, is still disheartening. And I know a number of you said just as much when we first started talking about the 1221 Plus when it was first revealed. So, 1 GBE, come on guys, step up. Reason number two that a number of you may not want to jump on a bandwagon with this device is the expandability. Yes, it supports an expansion, but you can only add 4 drives. This system allows you to add the RX418, a 4 bay NAS expansion device via eSATA, but four drives? That's not a lot. This is already an eight drive system. Now, we've talked about this before. Synology needs to work on their expansion systems. They need more and more diverse selection and definitely more diverse support across their platform. Having an eight bay that can only be added by four more drives isn't a huge upgrade later on. We've, we see lots and lots of their systems, like the RS 3600 series that allows you on a 12 bay to add 
two more 12 bay expansions. We look at the 1520, which arrives with support of two 5 bay expansions on the side of it. The 1821 series, the DS1821 precisely, that we can talk about more in a bit, that system has near enough identical hardware to this, and it has NVMEs inside, and it has the ability to expand with two expansion devices. So why, oh why, does this, tw uh, this 1221 plus 8 bay only allow one expansion? It's too limiting, and it's too low a glass ceiling for a number of us that are going to use those SHR advantages that allow us to bolt on and evolve our storage along the line with BTRFS, but only be able to add four more drives is real disheartening on this device. Reason number three, that you may not want to consider this device, and I've already alluded to it there, no NVMe. Why has this system not got the NVMe, uh, the M2 NVMe SSD caching bays that we have seen on a number of their other Ryzen systems? 1621, 1821, they've got the M2 NVMe's. They've got the same CPU as this device, that AMD Ryzen, so the PCIe lanes are there. Where are those lanes being used? Why is there no M2 here? Is it simply that the board, they're utilising a familiar board that they've used before, or is it because this system is utilising those PCIe lanes in a way that I can't see? But the lack of NVMe M2 SSD cache on this is a shame, because Synology have done so much good stuff in 6.2 and 7 coming soon to allow you to improve the internal performance and with a lot of their application taking advantage of those uh, the performance increases, not having the NVMe slots on this device seems like a bit of a misstep by Synology. And we've seen them use NVMe M2 on the likes of the 1621 um, XS Plus. So they definitely have it on rack mounts, just not this one. Reason number four, that you may not consider this, this device, and I kind of already talked about this at the beginning, but it's worth elaborating on. It's the price point. Now, yes, the price isn't the end of the world. It really isn't. I mean, one to 1,200 quid, depending on your tax, where you live in the world, is actually not bad for a rack mount business 8 bay. That's actually not a decent price at all. But given the insane similarity between this device and the DS1821, both 8 bays, both Ryzen, both 4G ECC, both for LAN, both PCIe Gen 3 times 8 both expandable. The 8-bay the desktop can be expanded by 10 more drives. The 8-bay desktop has NVMe SSD cache, and the 8-bay has the same three-year warranty and is in a metal chassis. Why, oh why, is there 300 quid price difference between them? Why is the RS-1221 Plus 300 quid more expensive. Now, yes, it's a rack mount, it's more metallic, there's a little bit more work that goes into that chassis, but I'm not buying it. That 300 quid does not go just towards that chassis, and given that that system is less expandable, given that system doesn't have the NVMe inside and is near enough identical in every other way, I am calling BS on that, and I do think a 300 quid price difference seems like a business tax. It seems like if you're buying a rack mount, You've got to pay the house for that. And I'm not sure I like that. So that's one of the things I don't like about that device. And reason number five that you may not want to consider the RS-1221 Plus is that PSU. Now, this is very much going to be angling at a very small number of people there. But the um, RS-1221 Plus non-RP model does not have a removable PSU, which I know seems incredibly small fry. But when it comes to RMAs, when it comes to repairs, when it comes to having replacements on site, the PSU inside this device with its angular internal design, I mean, it's great in terms of keeping that 12, um, the 12 inch 30 centimeter depth, but a number of you like to have removable PSUs on your system. You like to be able to have a spare PSU to hand where you can swap it out. And that's something this device doesn't do. Now I get why Synology have done that. It is a compact rack mount chassis, and if you are of that frame of mind with removable PSUs, maybe a half depth rack mount isn't for you. But that said, we've seen lots of half depth systems that have PSUs that are just four screws, remove, install a new one. We've seen them more and more. And the fact that this system doesn't have an easily exchangeable um, PSU, be it via a pulley system and a switch on the back, or just four screws and out, will disappoint some 
who know that the PSU is one of the most fragile parts of any storage system that's on 24 hours a day. But these are minor points, and it's a particularly niche audience that will have a problem with that. But this has been my 5v5 for the RS-1221+. Plus. If you want to learn more, visit the link in the descriptions or to all of the content we've made on this device. Click like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe to learn more. Visit me at NAS Compares for more and more guides on the subject of network attached storage. And of course, visit the guys at span.com, the data storage experts to help you with your next solution. I'll see you next time.